Okay, this is today we're going to be making the Dutch apple cake. So before you get started, you need to gather your equipment. You need one big mixing bowl, you need an electric whisk, and you need two foil cases if you don't have your own cake tin. Okay, first thing you're going to do is preheat your oven to 180 degrees, and then you're going to grease these two tins. So you're going to put a little bit of butter and spread it all around the edges and on the bottom, and that will make sure the cake doesn't stick to the tins. Once you've done that, we're going to put in 100 grams of caster sugar and 100 grams of margarine or butter into a large mixing bowl. We're then going to use the creaming method to get lots of air into the mixture, which is going to create that really light, fluffy sponge. We're going to use an electric whisk to do that. So you've got your electric whisk, it's got a wire. You don't want to put this over the ovens because it can melt or near any water. So make sure you haven't got your wire dangling over anything that could be dangerous. You need two whisk attachments and they go just underneath in those holes. You'll see there's two lines and two prongs. The prongs need to match up into the lines. Okay. So you'll hear them click into place and then just give them a gentle pull. Check they're not going to come out because if they're loose they could fly off when you're trying to start mixing. Okay. Before you turn it on at the plug you need to make sure that it's next to zero because if you plug that in, turn it on, it could whiz round um, before you've started. So, there's also a button on top that ejects the whisks, so you need to leave that alone. To turn it on, you're going to move that button up. You're going to start slowly on number one and gradually move up to the number three. Okay, and this is the creaming method. You're getting lots of air in with that margarine and that caster sugar. It's going to take a couple of minutes, you're really mixing it round, and it will notice it will change colour from a dark yellow to a really light green colour. It should double in volume as well. So keep mixing that until it's all light and fluffy. It'll take just a couple of minutes. You'll notice it's starting to change colour, and that is the air you're putting into it. see that's now gone into a real pale colour, it's doubled in volume, it's really light and fluffy. Next we're going to add in two eggs, we're going to do one at a time to make sure it doesn't curdle, so crack one in using the knife, again mix that with your electric whisk, and mix until it's all incorporated, make sure you get any butter off on the sides, Wait until it's totally stopped before you pull it out. If you pull it out and the whisk is still on, it's going to spread your cake mixture all over the table. Another one. Together, turn that off, give your whisk a little tap and move it out of the way. Now you're going to add in your flour and your baking powder. So you're going to put one teaspoon of baking powder in with your flour and then you're going to use the sieve to sieve that in and that's going to get more air into your mixture. So you're going to pour that into the sieve and to use the sieve you just gently tap the sieve on your hand. You don't hit the sieve because that will send the flour everywhere. You use the sieve and gently tap that against your hand. If you have any lumps left in the bottom like I've got there, just use the back of a spoon to push that through. Then we're going to fold that mixture in. So we're going around the edges over the top to get that, keep that air in. If you use the electric whisk, you've got a real chance of losing all the air that you've put into that mixture out of it. So you're going to gently mix that in, going around the edges underneath, or in a figure of eight motion. Until there's no flour lumps, keep going. So around the edges underneath, and this is the folding technique. And there we go. You see there's no pockets of flour left in there, and there's still lots of air, and it's still really light and fluffy. You're going to then evenly put that into your two tins. So do a spoonful into each one to make sure there's even as possible and just keep going until all of your cake mix has been used up. You don't want to overfill them because 
they were going to rise and double in size. If you overfill them, they'll rise too high and they'll spill all over. There we go. So the next thing is you're going to add your apple on top. So you're going to cut your apple. You're going to do one cut across here and one cut across here using the bridge method. So you'll leave a slice in the middle. That's what you want. So you can get rid of that because we don't need that. And we're going to evenly and thinly slice this apple. And this is then going to go on top, which makes the apple of your Dutch apple cake. So do both sides, making sure your fingers are always out of the way, as evenly as possible. And then we're going to layer them on top. Start at the back, and then we're just going to gently layer that apple all the way down the middle. Okay? If you want to get more creative, you can do a pattern that is totally up to you. Do that with both of your cakes, and then you're going to add in a mixture of cinnamon and demerara sugar on top, and that's going to give you a really nice crunch and flavour to your apple. So using a little teaspoon, just give that a really nice sprinkle on top. Now we're going to put that in the oven for about 20 minutes. Once that's done, you will then have two cakes come out looking like this. What you're looking for, to check if your cake is done, it should be light and springy to the touch, really golden on the edges. And you can use a little cocktail stick to put in, pull out, and it should come out clean. If your finger sinks when you touch it, it's not quite ready. Put it in for a few more minutes.